Hello students, in this video we'll discuss the Smith normal form of a matrix. Let's consider an M by N matrix A whose rank is R, right? Now, of course, in our context, what the rank R means, it just means that, that when I do the reduced row echelon form of R, the reduced row echelon form of R of the matrix A has R leading ones, has R leading ones, or R pivots. That's what it means to be rank R, okay? Great, and so what this means, of course, this means that there exists a sequence, there are, there is a sequence of elementary matrices of those. E1 through EK, such that, such that EK, EK minus one, E1 applied to A is R, and this R is going to be the reduced row echelon form of A. Okay. Great. And what we're going to do now is we're going to call this matrix over here, take this matrix over here, and call this matrix, let's call this matrix over here, let's call that matrix over there U. And so in other words, what this allows us to conclude is this allows us to conclude that U, which is an invertible matrix, A, is equal to R, right? And so here U is, of course, invertible since it's a product of elementary matrices. That's an invertible matrix over there. Okay, so if we sort of think about this as concatenating A to the identity matrix, in other words, what I can do is if I say if I concatenate, I take A, which is an M by N matrix, so it says M rows, and I concatenate the identity operator over here. What we're going to do is if I do these row, if I do this sequence of operations, the U operations, What will happen is I will get to what? I'll get to the matrix R over here, the reduced row echelon form over here, and the identity will be transformed into U over here, right? Excellent. So of course the structure of U is just gonna be an M by M matrix, right? So U over here is M by M. So U of course is an M by M. Okay, excellent. Because remember we have to hit A with something that has an M in its first slot over here. Great. All right, so now since R, since this matrix R, the reduced row echelon form, has little r pivots, or r leading ones, because of course that's not going to, uh, uh, that, that's exactly what it means of r leading ones. So there exists, there is an invertible matrix V, which just permutes the columns, it's a permutation matrix. Such that what? Such that R times V, R times V puts all the leading ones in the first R slot, in the first R columns over here. So in other words, I can sort of symbolic it, right? That is identity R, and then put zeros everywhere else in my matrix like that. In other words, I put all of the leading ones in the first R entries just by permuting, because I know that this is in reduced row echelon form over here, so I can find an invertible matrix that basically eliminates all the non-zero entries, puts everything into one form, and puts all of the, so what might happen is I might have all of the ones might be scattered throughout the rows of the matrix, right? What I'll do is I'll just permute them in an order, so that that permutation puts all of the leading ones in the first couple columns over here, right? So we have R times V is equal to this identity matrix over here, right? Okay, excellent. And so now, of course, what we can say is the following. So now we're in good shape. Of course, what's R over here? So R still, of course, is a what? R is going to be an M by N matrix over here, right? So we can figure out exactly what the dimensions of this thing is going to be. Great. Okay. So now, of course, what does V have to be? So V has to be an N by N matrix over here. So N by N matrix. N by N matrix over here. And this, of course, if this is going to be an N by N matrix, I'm going to have an R times V, so it's going to be an M by, by N times N times N. That's going to be an M by N matrix over here. So this thing over here is going to be an M by N matrix over here, okay? And so the M by N matrix, the M by N matrix, 
the n by n matrix over here, which is identity r, 0, 0, 0. And that's r by r, right, is the Smith normal form. of the matrix A. Great. All right, and so of course, what do we know? We know that R times V is equal to this thing over here, so I know that A, U times A times V is gonna be this matrix over here. So in other words, what do we have succinctly? Succinctly, we have the following. We have that U times A times V is gonna be equal to what? U times A times V is gonna be this Smith normal form over here, so identity R, Zero, zero, zero. And those, of course, are zero matrices over here. Okay. So, good. So, of course, this is an M. So, let's look at the dimensions. Of course, A is going to be an M by N. V is going to be an N by N. It's going to alter the columns. And then U is going to be a what? An M by M. And then U and V are invertible. That's important over here, okay? And so now this allows us to con conclude the following result over here. So we say, so definition, we say that two M by N matrices, A and B, are equivalent What does it mean for two matrices to be equivalent? If there exists a matrix U, which is going to be an M by M, and V, which is N by N invertible, these matrices are invertible, such that, such that B is equal to U A V, okay? Now, of course, what do we know? We know that two matrices have to be equivalent if and only if they have the same rank. So that's a theorem. So theorem. And we can write, what we're going to do is we're going to write this. If this is the case, we're going to write A equivalent to B. And so our theorem is that A is equivalent to B if and only if the rank of A is equal to the rank of B. Okay. And so, of course, the, the proof comes from the Smith normal form, right? So, of course, if I give you a matrix A with rank equal to R, then I know that I can find verbal matrices U and V such that you reduce it to this matrix over here, right? Analogously, if B has rank R, I can do exactly the same thing. I can find matrices U. So, in other words, let's think of it from this perspective. What we can do, of course, is we could say that I know that U, B, B, V, B, would be equal to this form over here, and that would be equal to U, A, A, V, A, right? So in other words, both U, A, A, V, A, and U, B, B, V, B will have this exact form, which shows that B is going to be what? B is going to be V inverse, I'll put the V, B inverse over here, and the U, B inverse over here, and I'll have that B is equal to some invertible matrix, a, some invertible matrix of the right dimension, so that would say that B is equivalent to A. So if B is equivalent to A implies this, and then analogously, that means that this, so if they, have this, if they have the same rank, then I can use the Smith normal form, and if they're equivalent to each other, then I can put them also into the same Smith normal form. So the Smith normal form of, of two matrices that have the same rank exactly gives me that two matrices are equivalent to each other, which means that they're the same matrix up to an invertible M by N matrix on the left side to rearrange the rows, and an invertible N by N matrix on the right hand side to rearrange the columns and that structure will preserve the rank of the matrix. So two matrices are equivalent if and only if they have the same rank, if and only if they have the same Smith normal form. Thank you very much.